Hi guys and thank you for tuning in. If you would ask an American about their definition of simplicity and effectiveness, they would show you this. McDonald's meal, a simple and cheap thing ready to eat after less than 180 seconds from placing an order. Australians, on the other hand, would show you this. The world's smallest and simplest defibrillator ever, which is not only as simple to use as McDonald's to order, but is also a size of the McDonald's cup. And that's the whole defibrillator not just the part of it. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. The history of the defibrillation is quite a short one. Defibrillators were first demonstrated in 1899 by Jean-Louis Prévost and Frédéric Batelli, two physiologists from University of Geneva, Switzerland. They discovered that small electrical shocks could induce ventricular fibrillation in dogs and that larger charges would reverse the condition. The external defibrillator, as known today, was invented by electrical engineer William Kuvenhoven and looked like this. The father of the modern AED, Professor James Francis Frank Partridge, uh, was a physician and a cardiologist from Northern Ireland who transformed emergency medicine and paramedic services with the invention of the portable defibrillator. Today, most common AEDs are pretty much the size of the small suitcase and available not only on the fire trucks and basic versions of ambulances, but also in the village halls, community halls and other public spaces. Don't get me wrong, as a paramedic and a person who just entered the age of increased risk of sudden cardiac arrest, plus all those kebabs, uh, I'm really, really happy that there are more and more aids available. But let's be honest, if I collapse and someone will actually decide to perform CPR on me, getting the defib from the nearest place will take some time, not even mentioning a crew that will bring either AD or fully manual defibrillator. And that's where I find this little device really helpful. People with increased risk of cardiac arrest can have them at home or simply in the pocket. And if you think about our profession, all those bike units or first responders or even search and rescue units where every gram counts. And how to use it? You simply take it out of the box, you snap it and place it on the patient's Call chest help. as Remain shown calm. on the diagram. And now you just listen to Analyzing the commands. heart rhythm. Do not touch patient. Shock advice. Didn't I just tell you that it is as easy as ordering a McDonald's meal? Now, with this device being close to ideal, I have one doubt and it's about the pad itself. Significant breast tissue can contribute to impedance. So if you think about defibrillation of a female with significant breast tissue, you should change the pad's positioning to buy auxiliary. I'm not sure, and I mean it in the most respectful way, if this electrode will stay there due to the device weight. The device I have is a training one, therefore being used a couple of times so cannot judge the thickness of the uh, pad. The second thing also relates to the pad itself. Studies have recommended that at least 80 newtons of force should be applied when adhering the pad to a victim. Therefore, when we apply the parts of the manual defibrillator, we press firmly to achieve the proper adhesion. Will this part be sticky enough and user remember to press firmly to the skin? At the moment, it doesn't feel like it, but again, as I said, it's a training device, so we cannot judge the whole product. Product which should be on the market in late autumn 2022. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe to the channel and smack like button. It will really help my channel to grow. Meanwhile, stay safe and see you next time. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.